<laughs> this will be ravenous munchies because I'm Raven. And... Why do I like to munchie? Uh, so today we're actually going to be doing pulled pork, coleslaw, and if I'm feeling frisky, onion rings. Probably not the onion rings. They seem complicated, but definitely pulled pork. And that's why you're here today. Stay tuned. Um, forgive me, I'm gonna go glove up because like a week ago, I had to have a melanoma removed. Stay tuned for that video, Melanoma PSA. I'll be right back. I was gonna grab just one glove and then I was like, is that too Michael Jackson? So today's pulled pork is very easy to make, super simple, very few ingredients, and it pretty much just sits in the crock pot all day long. What you're gonna need to make this is a beautiful pork shoulder or pork butt. Ooh, I prefer shoulder. I also prefer boneless versus bone in. Make sure you read your labels because half the time they usually put a bone in there and um, uh, it might not be the kind of bone you want. Uh, so I like to do that. I also like to carve a center kind of crevice, if you will. Sometimes they come like that because of the way the meat is butchered. Today, I was lucky enough to get one that was like that. It also has very little fat. Uh, it's up to you whether you want to discard or excise the extra fat. For me, I prefer to leave it on and then whatever side is the fattiest. Is that a word? Fattiest. I don't think that's a word. <laughs> whatever side is the fattiest, I put that side down so it can cook first for the majority of the hours. And then when I shred the meat later on, I go in and I take out any excess large portions of fat. Um, that's just the way we do it in my house. You can do it any way you want because you're going to be eating it if you make this at home and not me. So, you know, what else? Oh, I knives. <laughs> uh, you might also notice my lovely Disney crock pot. Ooh, <laughs> got this for Christmas. My in-laws know me well. <laughs> So when cutting my onion, especially for something like this, unfortunately for me, lol, my husband does not like onions in large quantities. He doesn't like big pieces. So I have to cut everything into really small chunks, even when I'm making pico de gallo. Uh, he's gotten better over the years, but you know, hey, he's my husband and I love him, so I don't mind doing it. So when I cut an onion, what I do is I cut off the root and then I cut off the stem and then I cross hatch. So I go this way and then I go this way. And then I pretty much just lump everything together. You'll see it in a second. Ooh. <laughs> to trunch. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Onions. <laughs> well, it did make me go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yep, yeah, that's sexy. I wish I didn't like these so much and that they weren't in so many delicious foods, but they are. Uh, so this onion was massive and my pulled pork is, I think only about six and a half pounds, um, which is kind of small, but it's just me and my husband. I'm not making it for any particular reason except for to have pulled pork for the week and make a video for you guys. Um, I hope you guys like my, uh, I've been crying. <laughs> that might be the thumbnail for this. Yeah. Uh On today's recipe, we're gonna be using ground cinnamon, coarse black pepper, sea salt, paprika, chili powder, ground cumin, and of course, brown sugar, but just a little. <laughs> just kidding, it's a butt ton. In addition to that, we're gonna be using stock, and of course, I'm making a coleslaw. See you on the other side. All right, so now I have my pork shoulder. Once again, boneless, not bone in. Make sure you pay attention to your labeling. I prefer boneless, simply because it's not such a pain in the ass to deal with. Um, this one was cut already down the center for me. If it isn't, I choose to do this simply because I like to get the seasoning um, throughout the meat. Um, this one also doesn't have too much extra fat. It's only got a couple of pieces right here, um, but this is the part that'll actually put face down. Uh, if you look at the other side of the meat, it's got a little bit of fat, but nothing huge. 
Um, this will be the side that I go down, and then once I pull the meat later, I'll actually pull that fat out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my mixture. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my mixture, which is, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my mixture, it's two tablespoons of brown sugar, one teaspoon of chili powder, one teaspoon salt, one teaspoon cumin, quarter teaspoon of cinnamon, quarter teaspoon of pepper, um, and a little more pepper to taste if you like. I prefer a little bit more pepper, so I add more pepper. I know other people don't, so there you go. Um, this recipe is a little heavier in brown sugar, simply because I'm not including a barbecue sauce in this. This is gonna be more of a dry pulled pork um, that sauce can be added to later. Um, so I wanna take about half my mixture, sprinkle it around. Normally I would do this on a cutting board, but I didn't feel like it. I didn't feel like dirtying another one. Um, mostly because I'm not cutting the meat anyway, I'm not butchering. If I'm not butchering a meat, um, I'm just seasoning. I'll, most of the time I'll use um, Ziplocs and things like that. Uh, so this is why it's important to look at your meat um, and, and examine everything. That was actually a little sliver of bone that was in there. Um, you can tell that it's partly cartilaginous, which means it's not solidly bone. It could be just cartilage. Uh, it's probably a connector piece. Um, the problem with that is, is when that's cooked for six hours, that can actually get really soft and you can choke on something like that. So it's important to look. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna flip this over. We're gonna go ahead and pour this mixture on. Just keep rubbing and rubbing and rubbing. Make sure you get every little nook and cranny. And then I wanna go in and I wanna get the meat in the middle. I just wanna make sure that every little piece is covered. Um, don't be afraid to massage things in the meat as well. Um, the worst thing you're gonna do is tenderize your meat a little bit and that's not really a big deal. Make sure you don't, I don't like to pour directly onto the meat, um, simply because I don't wanna lose any of my seasonings, any of my flavoring, anything that I worked into the meat already. All right, so we're about two and a half hours in and it's time to check and flip that pool pour. Ooh, steamy. Just the way I like it. Mm-hmm. So forgive my Peg Bundy bra, but um, I don't care. Yay! So it's time to flim the pulled pork. Um, you always gotta make sure you try and do it in one piece. Um, I usually just grab a couple pair of tongs. And then when I'm flipping it, um, I like to check it to see how we're doing. You can kind of tell um, the give of the meat, how, you're, how close you are. If anything starts to pull away, um, I'm getting a little bit of pull, not too much. Makes sense though, because um, we're only, let's see, only about two and a, no, three and a half hours in, excuse me now. Um, and at full time, we should go six to eight hours. So that's good. Um, the only difference that I'm going to do is I think I'm going to add a hint of soy sauce every once in a while between the cinnamon and the brown sugar. It can get a little sugary. So to combat that, you can add a little bit of salt or a little bit of soy sauce or a little bit of A1 or a little bit of Worcestershire. Depends on what flavors you like. Once again, I prefer Asian flavors, so I'm going to add in the soy sauce. See you on the other side. I'm really feeling this Michael Jackson cookie. <laughs> So I did what I like to call a pre-pull, which is where uh, about an hour and a half before the pork is done, 
I pull apart the bigger chunks just to make sure everything is cooked all the way through. And I pull apart um, just about to these pieces, you know, medium size. Um, and then uh, most recipes call for you to drain the juice. I do not do that. Um, I do this pre-shred and then I let the juices soak up even more so that way I don't have dry pork. Um, and then if there's any juice when it's done cooking, that is when I drain it. But there usually isn't any when I pre-pull like this. I almost always get nice, juicy, moist pork. Ew, that's gross sounding. Yeah, 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 you don't sound that. Just gross myself out. Regardless, it turns out delicious. It soaks up all the moisture, soaks up all the juices. It doesn't dry out. It reheats really well for days. So yeah, um, we will see you in another hour. Bye. What? Voilà. <laughs> that was awesome. Okay, so the pulled pork is done, and the only thing that's left to do is serve it up. So I chose to do Hawaiian rolls. They come in that handy dandy little paper thing, throw it in the oven 300 degrees for like literally two minutes, and that's it. In addition to that, do a little, little coleslaw action. A little coleslaw. Boom. Also decided to fry up some tempura onion rings, cause you know, you know. And there you go. And. I decided to make a more plain version of a pulled pork, but you can also include barbecue sauce, teriyaki sauce, sweet chili sauce, pretty much anything you want to. So yeah, the only thing that's left is to uh, taste it. Googly bear. Coming. <laughs> <laughs> Just happened to make two. Ooh, damn. Oh. <laughs> Yeah.